who's a software engineer working for Flutter apps and the creator of the blog, Flutter blog and Angular blog. Thanks for being on my channel, Felix. No problem, thanks for having me. Would you like to share a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm a software engineer at BMW, uh, graduated from University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, and um, I was actually born in Bulgaria, so I'm not a native U.S. Um, citizen, but um, yeah, I think, do you have any more specific questions? How did your journey start with Flutter? Um, it's a good question, yeah, so at BMW we have a very um, kind of large team that's split up into Android and iOS, just like a lot of other companies, and we had the issue of cross-platform feature parity, where our Android team was always very far behind in terms of features, and uh, they were also very understaffed. And so it was a very important decision that the business made to try to invest in new feature or uh, new technology that will help with kind of developing cross-platform so that we can keep Android and iOS in sync. So we kind of did a lot of um, iterations on evaluating things like React Native, Xamarin, Flutter, um, also just like new architectures for Native to help with that. And at the end of the day, we came down to uh, between basically Flutter and Rips, which is an Uber um, kind of design pattern. And we chose Flutter just because we thought that the community was like also phenomenal like there was a lot of good support from um, both Google and other developers and also just it was a pleasure to work with it was a pleasure to write tests um, and just we had a really good developer experience overall if you were to explain block to someone mm -hmm. how would you do it um, I think it depends so if, if it's uh, someone from a computer science background I would say just think of a simple state machine so it has an input and it has an output and then everything that happens inside is just a black box where all of your business logic kind of goes um, if I were talking to people who aren't as technical I would say just think of it as like a unit of logic where you're kind of gonna do all the complex uh, manipulations and computations and behind the scenes the people who are using it don't really have to care they just have to say like I'll compute this or dispatch whatever event and I'm gonna wait for the result and I don't really care how you got to it I don't really care what you did I just want to know what the result is so it's kind of a way to simplify um, as a developer you don't really have to know when you're building the UI where you're getting your data from and when, how you're getting all the different states that you're gonna be rendering you kind of just want to be able to handle all the different options and then as someone who's developing the business logic you don't necessarily care what the UI is gonna look like you just want to have a robust easily testable um, component that has all that business logic in there so I think thinking of it in terms of those two um, sides and, and how they come together to build a cohesive application is, is kind of how I'd explain it as a high level. Could you share your experience building packages? Yeah um, I actually had a pretty pleasant experience I think the documentation that the Dart and Flutter team have put together is very good and very comprehensive and it also helped to look at the Flutter open source packages um, particularly I was looking at like the web view, Google Maps, plugins for native integration, and then um, other good ones, I guess, are like the meta package is super popular, so I took some inspiration from there. But overall, it's pretty pleasant. I, I came from a web background, so I had done some NPM, uh, written some NPM packages in the past. And I have to say that it was at least, it was probably even more pleasant actually than writing an NPM package. I think um, it's very easy to get started, and um, there's almost no overhead. And um, yeah, it, it also offers a lot of cool things for people who develop packages. Like you get this nice score that shows you like how healthy your package is, how well maintained it is, how many people are using it. So it kind of motivates you to uh, keep maintaining it and keep coming back to it and, and putting more effort and time into it. So it was a really enjoyable process. Any advice for other developers who are building packages? Yeah, I think just look at what's out there. Um, I can't emphasize enough how much I learned from just looking at examples that Google developers have made and um, other developers in the community um, and just looking at the documentation. Um, I think that like that's one of the biggest things about Flutter is the community is so open and, and willing to help and there's so many different channels like there's a Slack channel, there's Medium articles, there's YouTube videos and uh, Facebook groups so I think just make sure it's, Excuse me, make sure that you go out there and you kind of like see what already exists and take the good from everything that you see and, and put it into your own package and put your own spin on it. Are you working on any of the Flutter project currently? Um, not really. Um, I think at BMW we're working on our, um, our mobile application. On the side I've worked on and off on a couple of applications in Flutter, but not currently. Uh, I'd say pretty much I'm just focusing on maintaining the packages and then working on the application at, at work, so for the time being. Did you come across any challenging feature while building Flutter applications? 
Um, I think at first we were most concerned about native integrations, like um, at BMW it's pretty important to have good map integration and um, we also want to make sure that we have good offline support, so having that persistent data storage layer is really important to us. And back when we first started it was more of a concern because there wasn't as much out there and I think our concerns have been alleviated quite a bit since seeing Google release the official Google Maps uh, plugin and other native integrations like WebView and um, I don't know, all kinds of geolocation. So I think that was kind of the most concerning part to us when we were starting off and we were also concerned about performance with platform channels and that type of thing and, and so far I think it's been pretty smooth sailing. I think everything's been working out pretty well. and. Um, also, Google's been very helpful. Whenever we have a question and we're stuck on something, we can just open an issue or send an email. So, um, I don't think there's been anything so far that's been like a huge blocker to us. We've been able to get through everything pretty quickly, which has been super nice. It's one of the few cross-platform solutions that seems to just work, and you don't constantly feel like you're getting stuck and uh, spend days and days on a single problem. So. Your top three do's and don'ts for a developer who's starting with Flutter. Um, I'd say do try a bunch of different tutorials and look at uh, Brian Egan's architecture samples. Um, do talk to people in the community, obviously, who have been heavily involved for um, just questions or inspiration. And a third do, I think, would be don't be afraid to change your mind halfway through about stuff. Like, you might try one thing and then realize that, oh, this isn't working for me, or I thought this was much simpler, but it's actually turning out to be way more confusing. And it's okay, like, change your mind and experiment. And I think that's one of the things that we've done a lot, and it's helped us greatly. Like, we didn't start anywhere near where we are right now, so I think just having that mindset that it's okay to make a mistake and change quickly, have a plan B, obviously, but um, don't be afraid to make those mistakes. Don't, I guess I would say, I mean, don't make assumptions about things until you've tried them is one of the biggest things. Like, I'm guilty of this, I'm sure a lot of people are. Like, you have your own biases, you have your own opinions about things, but really try to give them a, a good, um, try to give them some time and effort and, and look at it yourself before kind of dismissing it or saying this is not for me because there's no, nothing wrong with saying it's not for me after I've tried it. It's just when you label something without having even given it a, a fair look that I think causes problems. Um, also try not to be negative. I think the community so far has done a great job of just encouraging people and giving good feedback and, and helping each other and I think having that positive energy helps a lot and, and I really hope that it doesn't become like a community where people are saying like oh this is better than this and, and that's better than that and like we're all kind of trying to prove ourselves and instead just trying to help each other and I guess the last don't, I don't know, <laughs> don't, uh, hmm. Don't, oh, I have a good one. Don't jump on things too early. It's something that I've noticed. Like, I know it's really exciting that they've announced like Flutter for Web here and it's in the technical preview, but I think that it's good to take that as like, oh, this is really exciting and the Google team is making a lot of progress, but also like, it's still in preview. Um, and like, keep in mind where things are in terms of maturity and make your decisions based on that, I guess. I know that it's hard and you get caught up in the excitement and, and stuff like that, but I, I think one thing that is important and would alleviate frustration is if you kind of try to time things um, well so that you're not jumping on too early and then you feel like you have to rewrite everything later on or there are lots of breaking changes. And, and that happens all the time to developers, but maybe we can be a little more like, I don't know, conscious of that and, and save us some time um, further on down the road. But yeah, not really, not really a hard don't, but just like something I've noticed that I think might be useful. Definitely, I'm sure my subscribers would be really happy listening to your do's and don'ts. And thank you, Felix. Thank you so much for coming on my channel. And I'm going to leave all your social network, your packages, your GitHub awesome. link thanks. in the video description. And please do follow him. And thanks for being on my channel again. Thank you so much.